Hello everybody and welcome to a Friday art video. My name is Debbie, I'm a mixed media artist and um, yeah, I've got something new to show you today and a little unboxing, ignore the packaging because um, it, it's a case of they've put them in boxes that fit for the mail. So that's absolutely fine. I shall reveal all in a second. Um, so some housekeeping first if you like what you see don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and leave me a comment and I try to answer absolutely every single one so yeah love to talk to you and if you like what you see especially the peeks into my sketchbooks in a few minutes um, please consider joining my patreon where you can see much more of this sort of stuff and I will teach you how to paint like I do <laughs> so if you want to level up your game or if you want to learn art especially heading into these colder months because we're in autumn at the moment it's October when I'm filming this in case you're watching in the future and um, it's a really good time to sit down and say right that hobby I've always wanted I'm doing it so good time all the links are in the description box okay normally I would sit here and assert, probably rather untruthfully, that I am pretty impervious to advertising and I don't, um, you know, you can't sell me much. Most of you probably think that's not true considering the amount of art materials I buy. What I mean by that is I'm not often tempted by something that somebody comes to me with. I usually know what I want to buy and I'll go buy it and pay a fair price for it. Deal's done. A couple of weeks ago, I had a small art haul and you may remember seeing that I was given a free sample of Stadler's new pigment brush pen. And I thought, OK, right, fine. It's another marker. We don't need another marker. We've already got, oh, I don't know how many billion we're up to now, but it's a, it's a few. And then I went and had a look on their website. Oh, God, don't do that. Uh, because I've gone and bought some and I've got a little wish list to buy some more. This is the marker here. Now, just a little bit about it. It's a brush tip. So what you would expect from a brush tip, medium, fine, uh, pretty good pressure available that you can put on it, actually. Um, it's a multi-ink ink. I'm sure that that sounded different in the original German, but there we go. It's really good for mixed media. It is smudge proof. When it dries, it is permanent. So you can sketch something in and then watercolor over the top of it and it won't move. So they reliably tell me. And um, high, high light fastness, which is always good. Quick drying. It doesn't bleed or bleed through. Good for uses on several different sorts of substrates also. So that's also good. Um, and like I said, permanent, waterproof and smudge proof. But what attracted me to it and why I decided to buy some more, which I'd like to swatch for you today and also show you how I might use them both in my sketchbook and maybe a little sketch as well. Let's see how we go for time. Um, what attracted me was the colour range because normally and OK, I've got a few markers here in this little thing. And to be honest, they're all either versions of brown versions of gray or versions of black there's not a lot of other variation there's an alarming magenta colored one i mean they've sent me a second alarming magenta colored one this one is burgundy and it's made in japan it's a pentel one this one is a stadler made in germany and it's bordeaux red we might just compare those two that might be a fun comparison this is the random sample they sent me i would probably not have ordered this myself but it was a random sample so you get what you get and you don't throw a fit about it so here it is um i love all these but when i'm sketching trees especially as the season moves from summer through autumn into winter you get different colors in the forest so certain trees will reveal that they've got a different colored bark like bright red or silver um, 
And to give depth to my work, I like to have a few colour options with these markers. Now, a lot of these are not brush markers because it's really, really difficult to make a fine line with them. You have to learn to control the tip, but it is possible. So I'll give you a few tips on that in a minute. Um, what I wanted was not just the colour range, but the muted colour range. Let me explain. I paint... And just to give you some examples here in my sketchbooks, I tend to use, as you will know if you're one of my regulars, I tend to have quite a muted colour pad. You, my regulars will have seen all of this before. Um, but as you can see, everything's quite muted and quite sort of low key. I don't do anything very bright. But what I like is to be able to, you can see a little bit of it here in the background of this picture and I've used coloured pencils which are equally as hard to keep a point on and keep a nice fine line. These little branches and so forth. As the seasons move through, as I was starting to say a bit ago, as they move through from summer, autumn to winter and the leaves go, you start seeing different colours in the actual tree skeletons so the branches and trunks and twigs and that's what I want a material to be able to show and this is a really really good start by the look of it so you know all through here like for example you've got the trees that are closest will be darkest but the ones off in the distance will often be a different color add to that that when they lose their leaves completely you would think that you'd just see a blue sky like painted like a two-year-old in the background and this tree in front of it that's not true you can still see the shadows of different colors in there and these sorts of brushes can be really good for showing that um see here i've got these fine but these are all the same color i want different colors to get different depths um here's another example and actually using some of them to be able to put over the top of a watercolour background and they worked really particularly well for that. That's that for that one. There is another picture in there but it's absolutely top secret. It's going, it's on my Patreon next week and I super, super cannot show anybody just yet. Um, this is not so much. Uh, probably, you know, here, for example, just imagine if you had two or three different colours to add to this depth, that sort of thing. And something you could make quite fine lines with, these sorts of areas here. So that's, that's what I'm after. I do the ones that are close up. I'll do those with my acrylic markers. And the finest I've got from those are these Tuliart ones, which are uh, from a small... Um, family startup in California um, and these are great these are 0.7 millimeters and that's what I've used in fact I think I've also used this color to be fair to get this really fine work in the front here and fine details on things but what I'm after is something to get fine details in the background that look like if they're actually disappearing into the misty distance um, these sorts of things I think that's about it up here maybe as well see I probably would have added more to that so that it you get more and more depth so what I've got let's get this sketchbook I've got a few different colors like I said that was my freebie random sample very happy with that I like I said I wouldn't have bought that color it's a bit bright for me but I wonder how I can make them sort of mute down so I allowed myself 10 more. I thought 10 is a nice round figure and it seems like a fair, nice selection. The colours, I mean, look at the colours. These are my colours, totally my colours. And I found a few more that are my colours as well. Um, so what have I got here? I actually forgotten what I've ordered, but I did only order 10, which... Um, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. I'm and my extra one. Look at those colours for autumn. And then they've got blues and apricots and the palest, palest pink, which is going to be brilliant in winter when there are no uh, leaves on the trees. But you get this frosty. I don't. Know, I can't explain it. It's kind of like a halo of colour. So you'll get twigs, but there's still some colour around them. 
I shall see if I can find what I mean in one of my other sketchbooks. Okay, this sort of shows what I mean here, how you can see the definition of all of the trees that have pretty much left, lost their leaves, but you're still seeing a sort of a haze of colour through the leaves, because uh, through the trees. What causes that is the tiny twigs that you can't see with the naked eye from where you're standing, like several metres or several hundred metres away, they appear as a mass of colour like a little shadow of colour, and that's what I'm after. Um, and I love love sketching these winter trees. It's so relaxing, actually. Um, but to have some extra options of colours would be fabulous. So that's sort of what I mean. So I've got these wonderful colours here, and I have chosen maroon, um, light black. They had a couple of, they had a black, but I figured I have enough blacks, but light black, that's interesting. That's interesting in the way Mars black is interesting. Sienna raw, love this. This is one of my favourite colours, especially this time of the year. Burnt sienna, so akin to that one. Then a warm grey light, always on my list of needs. Umber. Dark olive or olive dark. Warm grey medium, golden ochre, and brown. And the one they sent me before was Bordeaux red, which is, yeah, it's bright. What I'm going to do to swatch these, because they're markers, brush tip markers like a lot of others, I'm not going to swatch them as a scribbly swatch or something like that. I'm going to swatch them as a tree to show you how I would actually use them. But before we get on with that, I'd like to compare the Pentel and the Stadler. So this is how I would like to swatch them for you so that we have a little sort of tree. So that's one. That's the new one. And this is the Pentel that I thought was quite bright. It's a lot pinker. So I actually prefer the Stadler one. It's a different nib as well. But it's the colour. I don't know. This colour looked very, very different on my computer when I bought it. Or else it would not have come into the house. Um, I don't mind pink in its place. And I have a few things in my house that are pink, seriously. But this pink so yeah i will find a way to use these maybe in the summer because sometimes when you really look at a garden you can see that some of the foliage and some of the bushes and twigs and so forth are actually alarming shades of pink the other thing of course that you can use a a brush tip pen for is to make some really quite easy leaves just with a stroke little bit of pressure and then off again and you get a sort of a leaf pattern so there will be ways to incorporate this into my work so what I'm going to do now is to swatch in the same way in no particular order this one is golden ochre and I always start my trees whether twiggy or otherwise in the direction of growth that's quite important to get those really nice thin twigs. Because like I said, these are brush markers. So therefore, in fact, this one might be easier to see. You can start with a very thin line and then depending on how much pressure you put on it or even using it on the side, you can get quite a different sort of line. And that's why these are beloved of um, people who love to do writing in their work like uh, any I guess some calligraphers and definitely journaling these are useful for journaling but I don't do anything like that I just want these to show these beautifully fine lines and I'm really basically flicking to get that nice fine line you can come back and put some leaves on of different sorts of quality fix that one a little bit depending on whether you go from the the uh, direction of growth or against it but it's all interesting so that one was golden ochre that's beautiful let's go with sienna raw oh yeah this is everything i had hoped it was it's that burnt orange it's a golden i don't know golden ochre if that is a a thing it is now you can put a little bit of pressure on to make the 
the trunks a little bit thicker. And it's just so easy to work with. Now, it's worth mentioning here, I did buy these with my own money, with the exception of the alarming pink one. Well, as they prefer to call it, Bordeaux Red. Um, but the rest I have bought myself. So it's not a sponsored post. It's just that I love them and I thought you might like to see them. They're quite new by the looks of it. They certainly led me to believe that with the advertising uh, leaflet that they popped in with my parcel. And of course... I don't, re I, people probably get sick of me saying this, but German quality, you cannot beat it. And a lot of our really good art materials are made here in Germany. And they're usually pretty darn good and worth the spend. This one is Burnt Sienna. These are gonna be nice and useful. And I'm looking forward to buying winter ones as well. Oh, I don't know. Since we've sort of got a bit of a trend going here, umber is the next darkest. Just flicking those out. Keep it up on its tippy toes and you can get such a fine line. Because obviously the finer lines towards the edge of the plant are more desirable. Really nice. Mm, very good. Very happy with that. Let's go brown next. This one is brown, quite boringly. They must have run out of superlatives. But it is exactly what it says on the tin, and it's particularly nice brown, actually. Hmm, I like that. I like these very much and I'm very pleased that I found them or they found me actually. So yeah, it's seriously uh, like putting a drug addict in charge of a pharmacy sending me a free sample of something. Marone. This one is marone and this one looks like a nice rich brownie red. So we shall see. Yes, it is too. Again, all of these have got a distinct use. And I'm only thinking about painting branches with them and, um, you know, sort of trees and foliage and what have you. But I dare say there are hundreds of other ways that I will incorporate these into my work. And I shall be sure to show you how. Quite nice for you know, putting leaves on and so forth. Lots of things. Then let's have a look at this green one, Olive Dark. And here again, gosh, that's really badly done. In springtime, when you've got new growth and the twigs are actually green, that sort of thing would be very, very useful for that. So I can really see how that's going to be a multi-seasonal thing. This one is the light black. So actually, I'm going to do that reverse because I'm going to assume that light black could be a bit of a dark grey. There's a fine line to cross over there, isn't there? Um, this one is warm grey light and it's one of my favourites. Oh gosh, that really is light. But it's the sort of light when you imagine that you've got a scenery with a bit of mist in the background and you can see things almost, but not completely, this would be perfect for that. Ghostly outlines of trees in the distance, that sort of thing. So definitely, definitely. This one is the warm grey medium. And then again, there again, really beautiful true colours. Very impressed with that. I like the fact that it can be controlled very easily. The brush tip isn't floppy. 
you can keep it really, really fine. As you're seeing here, I'm not doing, I mean, okay, I have a lot of practice doing these sorts of trees, but um, you can still see that I'm not having huge amounts of trouble unless I want to, you know, put some areas here I've put more pressure on on purpose. But the rest is quite simply easy to maintain a fine tip. So also good. Right, drum roll for the lucky last here, light black. Yeah, I would call that a dark warm grey and it's extremely welcome here in the mix. These weren't terribly expensive either. They're about two euros 35 um, per single piece which I think is okay for a good quality product like this. And like I said, it's the colours. Like, for example, I, I adore Posca markers, but they come in all of the colours that would excite a five-year-old. And whilst that's great and I have a lot of use for them and I use them a lot, um, some of the colours are just so gaudy. I don't want that. I like muted colours and these give me muted colours. Um and so many different options. So yeah, the light or the, yeah, the light black, was it? Yes, light black is really a dark warm gray, which I think is nice. So we'll just make a little bit of a swatch next to each one so that we can see it that way too, just in case what you're watching this on is not giving you a clear picture. No, really nice. Oh, wow, that's so, so lovely. I noticed some of them, they're smudgeable. That's good. Don't, okay, let me, yes, I did say that not smudging was one of their plus points, but I actually like smudging things. Let me just grab this sketchbook back again here. And um, all of these backgrounds and animals and birds and what have you here are all extensively smudged so i like a product that whilst it is wet it is smudgeable so for example now that it's dry it's not those trees are not going anywhere but whilst it's wet you can smudge it that brings me to this here because when you smudge something like that and create a sort of a a really nice misty effect with it you can actually push back the color a little bit so sometimes you'll find something that's a little bit bright but if you get in there quite quickly and smudge it as you can see it pushes it back really well so let's do a little sketchlet here just make some background noise with it and then come back in with one of these others over the top to continue the same theme. They layer really well. I mean, this does not represent what I might do in a real world sketch, but for the sake of showing you how you can smudge something and then bring in some of the other mixed media materials we use, and by that usually I mean coloured pencils, so Here's a Derwent Light Fast in Forest, which I love. Goes over the top quite well. Let's make a little bit of background here. Maybe a little bit of Caran d'Ache Green Ochre. Be a nice idea if I occasionally sharpen this. Give you a holiday for the pencil as well. Yeah, so like I said, very, very quick example here. And what happens if you smudge another colour into it over the top of what we've got? This one's the ochre one, I think, one of the ochres, golden ochre. Not surprisingly, when you look at it. So you can fill in a little bit there and smudge so that you can get actually get background effects with that. But although it hasn't knocked that pink back much, it is a little bit less strident than in the original example over here. So when I say something's not smudge proof, uh, is smudge proof, I mean it's not going to go anywhere now. 
with this. And if we check that with water, we can let's grab a brush. It doesn't really matter which. This is just a small flat brush. So you get some water and put over the top. Yeah, that's not going anywhere at all. So that's really quite good. So if you were to come in then with watercolours, just grab some sort of watercolour. This Japanese, Japanese one here can be layered over the top, which is also good for effects. And this is how you get these deep forest effects where you've got layer upon layer upon layer. So see, that goes really well with this and it's not absolutely not moving it. I like that. And again, it's the quality that you're paying for, even though I'm, I'm sorry, but I think two euros 35 is really a very good price to pay for such a quality product. And what can I say? The colors, the colors, the colors, the colors. That's what make it all sort of worthwhile. So here again, like I said, let's do the normal swatch. I won't worry about that one because that one's not part of it. Let me just have a look at these just so that you can see it a little bit better. Really nice. I did, mm, just perfect. Between the two of those, I could be happy for hours, <laughs> say weeks. I'll find something by this afternoon that I want to buy. Um, you know how it is. But I certainly will be building up my collection of these. That's really nice, that reddish maroon colour. And, of course, we've done the black and everything else. So that is my new obsession. And I'm going to um, see what they look like then layered. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's grab this one back again because there are some backgrounds, surely, that I are. Ah, we can add something in here, don't you think? So let's have a look at this one, the umber. Now, this is a really raw test because I've already painted. See, now that's going over acrylic marker. What made this background here is Posca marker and smudged out. But it goes over the top of that, no trouble. Don't want that because it looks like it's hovering. But it just adds a dimension of colour in amongst all these other lovely warm colours that we've got going on. Yeah, very, very nice indeed. And down here we've got some orange. It's even over the top of that. You can actually see it really well. It's transparent. It's not going to be like a, these other fine marks that you see here and some of these tree marks. Those are made with acrylic markers, as I showed you before. You're not going to get that effect with them, but it's still a noticeable effect. Anything else I can play with? That's got a bit of blue in it, that one. Um... See, all of these are smudged as well, but not the right colours. That one's got enough going on in it already, I suspect, so probably leave well alone. Um, but no, I'm really very, very impressed with them. Where is my swatch again? Um, and like I said, if you, you've got to work quickly to smudge them, because one, and once they dry, you get what you get. But really nice colours, really easy to use, accessible price, available singly, what's not to love so yeah i'm very pleased with those indeed and you will see them in my work in the future a lot more especially coming into winter where quite often in a landscape the only thing you've got to focus on are the shapes of what's left of the trees so this will be really nice thank you so much for watching like i said if you like all of this 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 here is a patreon tutorial where i show you how to do that sort of thing and few others and bits and pieces there if you like the look of my work do consider joining me on patreon i would love to see you over there it would be lovely to meet you and um otherwise i will see you next week with another video of some sort i don't know what it is yet so it'll be a surprise to both of us in the meantime take care everyone and i hope you get some arting time in this weekend bye for now bye